Good morning and a good morning. Today is Monday, the 17th day of Nisan. Last night we counted the second day of the Omer. Today what we're going to do, we're going to learn the lesson of the Tanya from yesterday and today from Sunday and Monday. Sunday was, the, of course, the second day of Pesach. We are in the middle of chapter 41 in the Tanya. And today we're discussing about experiencing heaven on earth, experiencing the real experience, what it means, what are we, what is the real experience of a Jew? This is experiencing godliness. You know, in the morning prayer, we're saying, First thing in the morning, say, God, the neshama that you gave into me, this is a pure neshama. You created it, you formed it, you blew it into me. But then we say, And you are destined to take it away from me. And the question is, why do we mention first thing in the morning, you just woke up? Why think about the fact that one day you're going to die? Maybe before you go to sleep, you don't know if you're going to wake up in the morning and say, oh, Hashem, save me. I'm, I might, I'll give back my neshama to you. But first thing in the morning, every single morning. And al talks about it in, the, in today's Tanya. And we'll explain it, what that means. and also. We begin with yesterday's class that the Alter Rebbe is talking about when you do a mitzvah, we do it with feeling of love and, the, and intending, having the proper meditation that you're doing it to, out of love of Hashem and fear of Hashem. We explained in length why one without the other is not enough. It is not good to have only love without fear, without awe. Because after all, the love has some selfish thing into it. Even when you love Hashem, but who, who loves Hashem? It's, it's something that satisfies you, your spiritual satisfaction, that you love Hashem and you do things for Hashem. That is why it's important to have also the yira, the fear, the awe. Awe is about your self-nullification. When you recognize there's something greater than yourself, this is the yira. But in the same time, it's not yira. Or alone, without, without uh, the, the love, that's also not good. You must have also, as the Alter Rebbe quoted said, you need to serve Hashem both like a son and like a servant. A son to a parent does things out of love. A servant does things out of, out of fear and, and awe. You do need also the son part. Even if you're nullified completely to Hashem, you need to have it that should become yours. You're love it. You're loving Hashem. So you need both. And as it compared it to, to a bird that needs two wings in order to fly, you cannot fly with one wing. So this was, in general, the concept of having the idea of the meditation, of having, having doing things for Hashem, loving Hashem, connecting to Hashem in the higher levels. And so yesterday's, Shear from the 16th of Nisan, said also, as we're going to learn it now, that you need not only to think about your own personal gains, your own personal connection with Hashem, you need also to have in mind that what you do has an effect in the higher worlds, in the source of your soul, and in the source of the soul of every single Jew. This is the source of the Neshama Sisral, the souls of the, of the Jewish people. They're in a higher place. And when you do a mitzvah, you have this in mind, that you're doing things, the mitzvah, it brings about a greater unification. He calls it the Yichud Kuchabrichu Ushchimte. The unification of Hashem, the Holy One, with His Shechina, with His divine presence. What does that mean? What does it mean to unite the Kuchabrichu and Shechinte? We say it actually every morning before Baruch Shama, before the prayer. We say, Lashem, Yichud, Kuchabrichu and Shechinte. 
That what we do, it should be for the purpose of uniting the Yich, the Kutcher Brichu and the Shechina. And we do it b'shem kol Yisrael in the name and behalf of all the Jewish people. So of course what it means, as we explain many times, the Kutcher Brichu represents godliness, which is beyond, it is the encompassing light of Hashem that, that does not is not capable of coming in in an internal way, connecting with us, because it's too powerful, too intense of a light. And when the Shechina, Shechina means, the word Shechina means that it dwells. This is, this is the, the divine Shechina after the Tzimtzum, after it's contracted, it dwells in us. In order to bring a greater revelation in us, you have the unification. So when you do a mitzvah with the proper intention, you're doing it for Hashem's sake and for the sake of all the Jewish people. You bringing down this higher form, this higher level, higher revelation of godliness to be included into the source of the energy of the all of the Jewish people, and then you include yourself in the in the public, and that is a benefit for both for for Am Israel and for you personally as well. So let's see inside. How the Alter Rebbe explains this. Again, this is, we begin with yesterday's class from Sunday, the 16th of Nisan. Says the Alter Rebbe, Yet in fact, the sages of blessed memory have said, A man should never separate himself from the community. Therefore, Therefore, he should intend to unite and attach to him, blessed be he, to Hashem, the source of his divine soul, and in addition, the source of the souls of all Israel. Now, this source being the spirit of his mouth, called by the name Shechina. Why is it called Shechina? Because the word Shechina means dwelling, because it dwells, Shechines, and clothes itself in all worlds, animating them and giving them existence. And it is the Shechina which imbues him with the power of speech to order this, to order his current word of Torah or with the power of action to perform the particular commandment at hand. Continues the Alter Rebbe says, "The Yichud Zeh, who al yedei am shochas oir ein soiv bochol lemato al yedei eisek atoyer v'mitzvah shumalu moshben." This union of the source of the Jewish souls with God is attained through drawing forth the light of the blessed Ein Sof, the light of Hashem, here below, by being occupied in the Torah and the commandments, wherein. The it, the light of the Ein Sof is clothed. The light of Hashem, as we explained uh, in length in previous chapters, but the light of Hashem is in um, the mitzvah that we do and the Torah that we study. And what do you have to have in mind when you study Torah when you do the mitzvahs? mitzvahs. <laughs> And he should be intent on drawing his blessed light over the source of his soul and of the souls of all Israel, so as to unite them with him, with Hashem. Now, this meaning of this union will be discussed at length later on the note there. This then is the meaning of the words we recite before performing various commandments. We say, for the sake of the union of Kutsu 
with his Shekhinah in the name of all Israel, of all Israel. We do it in the name of all the Yidin. Now in the notes is Dal Rebbe, there is an additional benefit. When you have the Yudu Mitzvahs with such intent, what happens is, you're, we, we explained it a few lessons ago, he says, when, when you do the mitzvah with this intent, you have the, the sweetening of the judgment. What does it mean, the sweetening of the judgment? There is the attributes, there is the attribute of kindness, the attribute of chest, of gevura, the attribute of, of severities. And ultimately, in the higher source, where they come from, they are they all are one, united with the, in the ends of light. Just like we explained the example, two children, they have different differences of opinions, they fight with each other, the siblings rivalry. But when the father sees things from above, he sees them both in, as one. And when he sees them united, that brings a greater joy and pleasure in Hashem. So when you do a mitzvah, and you have in mind to bring them to the source, to the root of all Israel, it shines upon them a greater light, the greater light that combines them both, and when it combines them both, it brings more the power of the sweetening of the kindness over the judgment. That's what it explains. So it says when you do this mitzvah, having in mind also the old yidin, the sword to bring down the light for not for just for yourself, but for all yidin, this is what is accomplished as well. Thereby, meaning, through the performance of Teir Mitzvah, the Gevuris will of themselves also be sweetened by the Chassanim through the, uh, the coalescence of the Midas, when they become together united and included with each other, and the union. And this is how by means of the revelation of the supernal will, which is revealed on high through the stimulus from below. And that is namely, its revelation here below is one's occupation in Torah and commandments, for they are his blessed will. So when you do this mitzvah, you're triggering this great, the ultimate, deeper will of Hashem. Thus it is written in Idre Rabba, in the Mishnah's Hasidim tracted Arich Anpin, chapter 1, Shetayag mitzvah satayro nimshoches michivate de Arich Anpin. And the 13, the 613 commandments of the Tayro are derived from the whiteness, the Hasidim of Arich Anpin. It's a Kabbalistic level of the Kesser, the crown, which is the supernal will, the source of the Hasidim. Now, says Al Rebbe, Al Rebbe says, now, what did we just say? That you have to have in mind not just to have yourself, uh, that your own connection with Hashem, your own Neshama, you have to have in mind the, the soul, connection, connecting the souls of all Israel. Now the Rebbe says, who are you kidding? You really, really have this, this is what you feel, that you want to have everybody in mind? We, we know we have, it's good enough if we have a, a, a feeling of connecting to Hashem, that we own we have our own love to Hashem and our, our own things. You, you, but to, to say that you're real, really in such a high level that you, have, you can have, you can feel the, the responsibility and the inclusion of all the in together. So the Alter Rebbe, the Alter Rebbe is going to explain, even though it may not be a real tangible feeling, but the fact that you think about it, you know about this, and you think about it, that has some kind of truth to it. And that little truth has the effect as if you're actually doing the right way. Says the Alter Rebbe, although, and although in order that this intent should be sincere in his heart, so that his heart should be truly desire this higher union 
uh, uniting all Jewish souls with their source in godliness. In order to do that, his heart must harbor a great love for God alone, which is to do that, what is gratifying to him alone and not for the purpose of quenching his soul's thirst for God. Because when you're doing, when you have love to Hashem, you're quenching your own thirst. But when you're doing things for Hashem alone, for the source of all Israel, so you you don't have any selfish interest in there. It's a high level. It's a high demand. This says the Alt Rebbe is compared, but it, it must be like a son who, who strives for his for the sake of his father and mother, whom he loves more than his own body and soul. Sometimes a child will risk his own life just to help his parents. As explained above in chapter 10, citing the Rai Meimna, the Zoya. So, so who are we kidding? Saying that we are able to reach such a level of, of having in mind only Hashem and only His sake and only the source of all Israel and so on. Nevertheless, says Dalt Rebbe Mikolmokem Yesh Lecholodom Le'agil Atzer Bekavanazu. Nevertheless, every person should habituate himself to this intent. Train yourself. Make it as your habit to think that way. For although it may not be in his heart in perfect and complete truth, so that he should long for it with all of his heart. So to some small extent, his heart genuinely desires it. Why? Because of the inborn love in every Jewish heart to do whatever is the supernal will of God. Deep, deep inside, a Jew wants to do what Hashem wants. So therefore, that also, the fact that you're doing things for the sake of all Israel is also a deep inside a truth. And this union, the union of the source of all Jewish souls with the infinite Ein Sof light is his true desire. What does a father want? A father wants all the children to be together. Namely, what is the union, the supernal union in the world of Atsilus, in the highest spiritual world? Which is produced by an arousal from below, meaning when we do his will, we arouse in him that upper union. Through the divine soul's union and absorption in God's light. God's light that is clothed in the Torah and the commandments in which it is it is engaged. When you're engaged in the will of Hashem, which is the Torah and the mitzvahs, that is causing the union. So that they, the divine soul and God, become one in reality, as has been explained above. Because for this, for by this, for by reason of this, the source of the Torah and commandments, meaning the Holy One, blessed be, is united with the source of the individual's divine soul. The divine soul is called, the source of the divine soul is called the Shekhinah. So this is expressed in terms of different levels of supernal illuminations. These are the categories of which is the filling the world, and the encompassing of all worlds. This is, the, as we explained earlier, the light of Hashem that fills the world is the more Reduced light and the light of Hashem that encompasses the world is the more intense light of Hashem. Commission is by Mokimach Marichus, as explained elsewhere 
at length. So this is when we're talking about the greater thoughts of uniting the source of all the Jewish souls. Now the Alter Rebbe goes back to the thought of the meditation of unifying your own soul with Hashem. That is no question. Everyone has this desire. Deep inside the natural love of a Jew is to be one with Hashem. That's what we want. That's the ultimate heaven. That's the ultimate living with Hashem. But the union of the person's own soul with and its absorb, absorption into the light of God, making them one. This is what every member of Israel desires in absolute and utter truth with all his heart and all his soul. May I have a TV some suteras believe call Israel a dovka Hashem because of the natural love that is hidden in every Jewish heart to cleave to God. And not under any circumstances to be parted or sundered or separated from God forbid from his blessed unity and oneness even at the cost of his very life and that is a fact throughout the history people gave their lives up even simple people not such so religious people they gave their lives up not to deny God now says the Alter Rebbe, what we began the, 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 the class with, uh, really, you do not need to die to experience this godliness. You can experience heaven right here on earth. You can experience the giving your life right here on earth. How? When you focus what you do when you, when you study Torah, when you pray, that in that moment when you pray and you study Torah, you are experiencing godliness. Why do we? Why does a person want? Why is a person ready to give his life up for Hashem? Because deep inside, the soul senses that the real life. Every soul wants to live. This is, that's a natural thing with us. But what is the real life? So when we live in in a physical world, we sense the physicality of the world. That's what we want. But subconsciously, there is in the soul a sense that it wants to be connected, wants to have the real life, and the real life is Hashem. The real life is God. So when you study the Torah and you do the mitzvahs, this is that's what it's all about. It's Hashem's life. This is Hashem's light in there. Hashem's will is in there. So when you study it and you do you do a mitzvah, that's what you are doing. You're living the real life. Being engaged in Torah, command, in Torah and commandments and prayer is also a matter of actual surrender of the soul. Just as when it leaves the body at the end of 70 years. When, that, when a person passes away, he doesn't think about the physical things. He doesn't think, think about what's going to be for dinner. He thinks about the words of Torah. Thinks about prayer. Thinks about Hashem. Thinks about the, the unity with Hashem. That's what the soul thinks, thinks about. For then it does not think of bodily needs, but it but its uh, thoughts is, in, is united with and clothed in the letters of Torah and prayer. Which are the words and thought of God, and they truly become one. The soul and the letters of Torah and prayer, God's thought and speech, it truly become one. Shezeu kol eisek anashamas began Eden, kadeisa begema avazayim. 
This is also the whole occupation of the souls in the Garden of Eden, in heaven. As it states in, in, in the Gemara and Zoya, what did they do? What are they occupied with? The words of Torah, the words of prayer. Except that, that there, meaning when souls in Ganeiden are immersed in the letters of Torah and prayer, they delight in their apprehension of an absorption into the light of God. But right here in this world, we don't feel it right away. And this Galtar Rebbe explained what we said in the beginning of the class, the morning prayer, what we say in the morning prayer. This is why it was ordained by the man of the great assembly that one recite at the beginning of the morning blessing before the prayer, my God, the soul, which you have placed within me is pure. You have breathed it into me and you will eventually take it from me. So I mentioned, take it from me right in the morning as you wake up. Says the that is to say that in as much as you have breathed it into me and you will eventually take it from me, I therefore, as of now, hand it over and return it to you to unite it with your oneness. So, so, so this is a, a, the Alter Rebbe gives us a whole deeper understanding and appreciation in this morning prayer. He's saying, when we're saying you are destined to take it away from me. Why are we mentioning this? We are mentioning this because we are saying that what is the real reality? The Neshama was one with Hashem before I came here. The Neshama will be one with Hashem after I leave this world. So therefore, what am I here for? I am here in order to connect, to give that neshama to you and unite with you right now here as I am in a physical body. That is the intent, that is the intent of this prayer. And this is, says the al is something that we should have in mind throughout the day, whatever you do. He said it in the morning, we say it in the morning right before we begin the day. So to say that everything what we do today is going to be for what, for that purpose, to, to be one with Hashem. When I do a mitzvah, when I go to work, I do business, I do for the sake of Hashem, that's what we have, in, have to have in mind. When we pray, we have to have this in mind. When we study Torah, we have to have this in mind. As the Alter Rebbe continues, says the Alter Rebbe, as it is written to you, O Lord, I lift my soul in order to unite it with, you, with God. How is it done? Through binding my thoughts with your thoughts. I think the words of Torah. I think what Hashem thinks. And my speech with your speech. By means of the letters of the Torah and prayer, which I utter. And especially, says the Alter Rebbe, especially when one addresses God in the second, in the second person, as in the phrase, blessed are you, and the like. So in Baruch Atta, as Hashem is right in front of me, I'm saying to him, blessed are you. So this is the end of yesterday's year, and we continue to today's class. Today's class, the, the 17th, Monday the 17th of Nisan, continues the Alter Rebbe. Now with this preparation, to surrender his soul to God, Meaning, through engaging in Torah and prayer in the same spirit in which a man surrenders his soul to God before his demise. As we said, when a person passes away, that's the only thing he has. 
that is with this preparation, that's how you begin your morning prayers. One should, one should begin to recite the morning benedictions, blessed are you, and so on. These benedictions being the beginning of one's prayer. Also, similarly with this preparations, one should also begin a regular course of study immediately after prayer. As we say, right after prayer, we're supposed to study Torah. And the same thing also during the day, says Dalta Rebbe. So also in, in the course of the day, before one begins to study, such preparation at least is necessary. At least before. In other words, Dalta Rebbe says, when you study Torah, let's say all day long, Obviously, your mind has to be when you study Torah. You have to, your mind has to be in, in in the subject that you study. You can't just think all day long that I'm I'm doing. I'm studying for Hashem. I'm studying for Hashem. I'm studying to give my life over to Hashem to real. So the Alter Rebbe, you don't have to do that. All you do is in the beginning when you begin to study, and you begin to study. That has an effect, even though your mind shifts then to the subject that you study. But since you began the study with that purpose, with that thing in mind, it is, has an effect on the whole study, what you study. And al Rebbe brings an example now to prove that the intention, the meditation that you do in the beginning has an effect on the rest. He brings it from the laws of when one writes a get. What is a get? Is a, divorce, a bill of divorce. When, God forbid people get divorced. They go to a person who writes the get, and the get cannot be done. You cannot have a, a forms of a get and fill in the names. The re- writing of the get is supposed to be with the person, that, ma- that person and his wife in mind, this individual and the uh, uh, man and this individual woman. That's when a person writes, he has to have it in mind to write for this, per- for this person. So there the law says, that you don't have to have constantly in mind that person. Just in the beginning, you say, when the beginning of writing the get, you say, this get I am writing for this person and this woman. And the same thing is also when you write a Sefer Torah. If you have been to a ceremony of conclusion of Sefer Torah and you had an opportunity to write in the Torah, as we've done here, you remember that the sofer takes the quill in his hand and you help him, and he says with you, L'shem Kedusha Sefer Teira, that you're doing the writing of the Sefer Teira for the sake of the holiness of the Sefer Torah. Because when you write a Torah, Torah is a holy scroll, it's a holy book. The holiness comes from the, uh, from the person's mind, the Jew has in mind that he's doing for the holiness of the Torah, that brings the holiness in the Sefer Teira. So now when a, when a Sefer, a scribe, sits and writes all day long, does he have to have constantly in mind these thoughts? No. In the beginning of the day, he goes to the mikveh and the tables, and then he has in mind to have this done for this holiness of the sefer and that suffices. So the same thing is true also when you do when you sit and study Torah, and when you have in mind that you're doing this for Mesir Nefesh, to giving the life to Hashem, giving the meaning, living the neshama to be united with Hashem through the learning of the Torah, that has an effect on the rest of the day, the rest of the Torah study. And al Rebbe goes on to say also that this needs to be done at least once an hour. Because it says every hour, is talking, it's talking about another hour on the watch, what we have, that's a different hour. That's an hour of, uh, it's called Shoz Manis. That it's uh, when you divide the daylight into 12, the night, into 12, each 12, each, uh, 12 is considered an hour where they have, you have different Kabbalistic, different energy that comes each hour. And therefore, each hour needs to have an additional thought, additional meditation. Continues the Alter Rebbe. 
קודם שיאסחיל ללמוד צריך אחרון זה לפחות is so also in the course of the day before one begins to study such preparation at least is necessary כנודא שיאיקר אחרון לשמור לאקף ובתחילת הסלים ובד בינונים and it is known that in the case of בינונים the essential preparation and intent for his own sake for its own sake where it is uh, indispensable is before the beginning of study. And the example that he brings is what we just said, This is the same as in the case of writing a bill of divorce or a scroll of the Torah. For uh, there, where for their own sake is an indispensable requirement. So there, we don't need to have this thought constantly, but it's enough, he said in the beginning. It is sufficient if at the commencement of writing the Torah scroll, the scribe says, I am now about to write for the sacred purpose of the scroll of the Torah. Or in the case of a bill of divorce, for him and for her, and so on. Now, this is the Alter Rebbe, what we just said, that when you learn many hours together, you need to do it every hour. And when he studies for a number of consecutive hours, he should reflect on the preparation, preparedness referenced to above, at least at hourly intervals. Why? He says, because in each hour there is a different flow from the higher worlds to animate those who dwell here below. While the flow of vitality from an high of the previous hour returns to its source. It goes constantly back and forth. In accordance with the esoteric principle of advancing and retreating, expounded in Sefer Yetzira. Together with all the Torah and good deeds of those who dwell here below, they all go back. And therefore, every hour you need to rethink that. And I'll tell explain, for in each hour of the 12 hours of the day, there rules one of the 12 combinations of the letters that form the four letters, name of Hashem, the Yud, the He, the Vav, and the He. But Yud Beis Shoy Sayyamid in the day, 12 days of the day, that's a Ruf Hashem Adna Belayla Kandaida. And the letters that comprise the divine name Adnai. The rule at night as is known. So this is the conclusion of this uh, lesson. And again, that in order to have the proper intent is to think about the greatness of Hashem, not only to connect our soul, but to connect the souls of all of Israel. And to have Mesiris Nefesh, you don't need to die to have Mesiris Nefesh given your life, however, you can live here and live a spiritual life by thinking at least, even if you don't feel it, but at least momentarily in the beginning of the day and during when you before you do the mitzvah, before you study the Torah, you do this uh, thought that you're doing this for the sake of uniting with Hashem, with the source. And it's interesting a uh, story with Al Rebbe talking about the. 12 combinations of the day that each hour has a different combination. So the story I mentioned once, and al Rebbe was in prison. He was there for 53 days. And he was in a place where they, he didn't, you couldn't see the difference between day and night. And after a while, prisoners get complete, completely, completely confused. And um, at one time, one of the interrogators walked into the cell of the al Rebbe and they asked him, he asked Alter Rebbe, why is he not sleeping? It's already late at night. And Alter Rebbe told him that it's the middle of the day, and he told him the exact time. And he was uh, shocked, amazed, that Alter Rebbe knew the exact time. And Alter Rebbe explained that every hour of the day has a different 
a different combination of godly energy. The Alter Rebbe was able to sense those godly energies. You know, La Havdil Elif of Dalit. There are some people, uh, uh, you know, Indian people or people of the earth, they're able to, to smell the earth and say what this, what what, uh, what kind of energy there is there, what, what is good to grow over here, where this oil, people have senses. The Alter Rebbe had La Havdil Elif of Dalit, the spiritual senses. Spiritual senses to be able to sense the godly energy that comes every single hour. But in any case, this is what the, the conclusion of this day of this year. Join us again, Vezas Hashem, tomorrow. All the best. A guten Moyet.